What's up, everybody? Welcome back to LettermanRow.com. I am Jeremy Birmingham. This is Bermanology. We are back in the class of 2022 after taking a break and going to 2023 a week ago. Uh, this week, we are moving down to North Carolina. We are talking to one of Ohio State's top overall targets remaining in the class of 2022, uh, Jalen Walker from Salisbury, North Carolina. Jalen, thanks for taking time, man. How the heck are you doing? Yes, sir. Thank you. I'm doing great. You know, the first thing I did when uh, we started talking about having you on the show was I looked up to see if the Salisbury stakes were created in Salisbury, <laughs> North Carolina. <laughs> And they're no, not. They were, they were named after a guy named John Salisbury, which I was somewhat right. disappointed. Um, but did, did wait you? Did you know that already? I, I know it's not originated from here, but uh, everybody gets them a lot. Uh, says that a lot. Uh, the Salisbury Stakes from Salisbury, North Carolina. I'm like, no, they're not. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. not something I would want to like stake claim. To, ah, stake. Right. That's a yeah, that's a dad joke. Stake claim to. Uh, <laughs> I wouldn't. I wouldn't. You know, put my my city on the map with that anyhow. But um, Jalen, you are a guy who is in the works of putting Salisbury really on the map of you know the fourth ranked linebacker in the country in the class of twenty twenty two, a player that has close to thirty offers yet because of the way the NCAA dead period has worked out. I don't think a lot of people know a lot about you. Um, you know, we cover Ohio State, but so let's start there. How did your relationship with the Buckeyes and with Al Washington really get started? Right. So over the summer, uh, I, you know, before September 1st, you know, I got that, uh, you know, just uh, reach out from Ohio State and from Coach Washington to give him a call uh, from my coach. And uh, ever since then, we built a relationship throughout the weeks of uh, going throughout a call, a scheduled call, and then once uh, we settled that, we had a, a, a big Zoom with Coach Day, the rest of the defensive staff, and uh, introducing what Ohio State was really about, and then they offered me then. How difficult do you think that the fact that North Carolina didn't play a season this year, uh, how much do you think that that has slowed down your recruitment and maybe your – I don't want to say it slowed down your national buzz. Like I said, you are the fourth-ranked outside linebacker in the country, so people are obviously aware of your potential. But do you feel like maybe this dead period – hindered things a little bit for you you know not really as much but it did you know i know lots of play, uh, players besides myself that uh didn't get that chance of getting exposure like they should have um but you know now we're playing february our first game is february 26 so i can't wait for that to uh, finally get out and show what my junior season has to showcase what are they doing are they playing a full season or is it a shortened season how are they working that in with you guys and then your senior season how does that all tie in Right. So we're playing seven uh, conference games. They're all conference games. And the top three in our conference, well, top two or three in our conference goes to the state playoffs. Interesting. I mean, I'm glad they're getting that to you. Obviously, that that break right. between the end of your junior season and the start of your senior season and really the, the start of recruiting season. You know, you guys are hoping to start taking official visits in April. We'll certainly uh, run up against each other. All right. What did you do this offseason to keep yourself mentally focused, to get yourself ready for whenever they gave you the green light to get back right. to work? You know, mentally focused, you know, there was a time during the summertime where I just went crazy because I found out our season was canceled, uh, well, postponed at that point and didn't know when it was going to be played. So uh, since then, I just that whole summer I've been working, uh, biking, uh, working out, lifting, running, staying active, you know, staying in my best of shape in case the season is back on and uh, everything starts running back smoothly. But, you know, unfortunately it didn't. So ever since then, I've just been uh, just filling into my body, you know, getting ready for my junior season, um, high expectations for the season for myself and uh, ready to succeed. I guess one of the questions I have for a player of your profile, someone that's, you know, so high nationally ranked, you probably had an opportunity to be recruited by other high schools in the last handful of months, right? What what kept you from making a move to Florida or to Georgia or somewhere else and said, hey, I want to stay at home and play at Salisbury High School? All right. Salisbury High School is very important because, you know, most of my family went to Salisbury High School, uh, all my cousins or we're in the area of Salisbury and, you know, I have lots of family here and I know my family would love to see me play uh, high school football, you know, and going to Florida or Georgia, anywhere, they're not able to see me play uh, directly, you know, face to face and congratulate me after the game, after a great win or something like that. And plus the coaching staff I have in my school, I feel like these guys are able to prepare me for the next level to mentally prepare me, physically prepare me to the next level and, 
plus, and of course, my uh, teammates, you know, my teammates grew up with them and it helps me a lot to just help them improve as well. Absolutely. With, with 30 offers, I mean, and the opportunity to visit schools really hasn't been there yet for you. How have you been able to pare down your list at all? I mean, I know you you dropped it into basically a, a third, so like a top 10 or, uh, you know, how do you start to really shrink things down from here? And are there any schools at this point that are sort of rising above anyone else in your mind? Not don't give me a, a top mm-hmm. three list or anything like that. Right. But I mean, what what's making the big difference for you? You know, the big difference is because how I narrowed these schools down was Zooms and doing my own research on my own time, you know, f- uh, figuring out what I needed to know, uh, what do they have to offer as school wise, football wise, who they play, how they play, what schemes they run, what packages they deal with and what type of players they put out and what type of players they need in their defense. And I took that and ran with it with myself and, you know, asked these coaches, uh, what, where do you see me as uh, as a position wise and what packages and schemes that you need me to run in? And, you know, ever since then, I've been doing multiple Zoom calls with these coaches and uh, they've given me the whole rundown of everything. And uh, what's also narrowing down is the relationship I have with these coaches as well. Uh, where do you see yourself uh, in a def- in a defense? W- w- what is the position that best suits Jalen Walker as far as your skill set? Right. I know I have a great speed and I can cover in space. Um, so I say myself, see myself as an outside linebacker position just for right now. But I can also well, at my high school right now, I play that hybrid position of being inside the box, outside the box, safety, anywhere they need me on the line, sometimes on rush in, just anywhere they need me in the certain type of game situation. So how many schools that are recruiting you are telling you, we don't know where you're going to play? And is that a good thing or a bad thing? Because that versatility is obviously something you possess, but you almost have to feel like the path to college needs to be clearer, right? Right. You know, it's not really where, it's not really an indefinite answer where I'm going to play. They do, most schools do see me as that hybrid position and some schools see me just playing one position like inside backer. And, or just just outside backer, but most schools see me as playing the hybrid position on the way my skill set is developed. Um, you know, you mentioned the desire to stay in North Carolina for high school because all all the family is going through there. Do you feel any pressure to stay closer to home for college? Is that something that weighs on you at all? Not really. You know, I know my family and their big support. Uh, they'll travel wherever I travel. Uh, everybody in this whole city of Salisbury that supports me. Uh, get, gives me that rundown of wherever you go, we'll wear that color or uh, we'll support that team. You know, just having that aspect really doesn't weigh on me. Uh, as you know, as I said, you know, we cover Ohio State. The Buckeyes have done fairly well recruiting your state in the last handful of years, including one of the state's best players a year ago and Evan Pryor. Uh, you know, it, do you have any sort of relationship with Evan? Do you have a, an opportunity to talk to him about what drew him to Ohio State? And how much does it help you to talk to players who are going to college now? Right. It helps me a lot uh, about players going to college. You know, they give me the whole uh, other look of how they feel and how they feel about these coaches and the whole hometown atmosphere that they get from the schools. But I haven't had a a chance to talk to Evan. I know he is a Ohio State commit. I'm not sure if he's enrolled early yet, but I know he'll enjoy it there. Yeah, he just uh, arrived at Ohio State this past weekend. So there's going to be a lot of uh, I'm sure you see a lot of that social media content Mm -hmm. because you guys, the way the recruiting is now, there's so much that you guys do together without actually getting to know each other. Right. You know, uh, is is the Ohio State class of 2022, which is the number one class in the country right now, how much of a how much attention do you pay to that early sort of momentum, but also Is there any relationship you have with those guys yet? Right. You know, I've made great relationship with the linebackers uh, there, you know, CJ and Desan and many other recruits going through the Ohio State process. You know, it's it's not really a a pressure I feel from them of committing to Ohio State. You know, it's making me feel like we can be great friends no matter where I go um, throughout this whole process. And, you know, they're always giving me that look like we're uh, getting ready to start something great and we want you to be a part of it. And I truly understand like they're doing great right now with uh, just not defensive players, but offensive players as well. And, you know, I really enjoy how they are 
doing that recruiting process and just enjoy making a friendship uh, throughout the years. I think it's interesting, uh, uh, you know, Jalen, you, you talk to a lot of guys and they'll say, okay, there's three linebackers committed. Why would I be a fourth linebacker in a recruiting mm -hmm. class? But then you see a place like Ohio State this year where you have Pete Werner, Justin Hilliard, Tuff Borland, Baron Browning. They all came in at different times, but they're all leaving right. together. So, I mean, do you do you see that as a deterrent or does it really – is it all about your personal path? You know, it's not really – about a deterrent, but uh, my personal path, you know, it helps a lot seeing that aspect, but I wouldn't mind going in with uh, four guys because, you know, we can all leave at a different time if we choose, or we can all leave together, uh, just depending on how we feel and how uh, each player feels and feels out their opportunity to go play at Ohio State. How much are you talking with Coach Washington? I mean, how much have you talked to Coach Day? Mm -hmm. How how would you right. stack up those relationships with other schools? Right. I talk to Coach Day, you know, every every week. You know, me and Coach Day have a great relationship. Uh, I know he's arrived at Ohio State two years ago, and he's done absolutely outstanding with their pro with his program right now. And he he uh, gives me motivation, and uh, shows me how he's uh, changed, and everybody else has changed the program in a good way. And, you know, I could talk to Coach Washington about every other day. You know, me and Coach uh, Washington have a great, uh, great relationship. You know, uh, he asked me about basketball games, you know, always giving him motivation. He's always giving me motivation, uh, giving me a different outlook on recruiting, not only as just a coach, but uh, giving me advice as well. Do you feel like you have a, a set plan of how this has to go from here? I mean, if if you woke up tomorrow and it was signing day, how how do you see that things had gone? Like, is there an early commitment? Is it wait till signing day? Is there a, I, a number of things you have to check off? What makes what makes you ready to make a choice? Right. It makes me ready. I think it's just that feeling uh, I have in my body, you know, feeling with my uh, family as well, you know, how they feel about the program. But there's not really a, a certain date on when it's going to happen. But I think it's just a mostly a gut feeling of and a feeling of readiness of when I can commit or should commit, but uh, I don't think I'm going to wait and plan to wait till signing day. One thing I've been kind of thinking about, and as you've seen in the last couple of weeks and uh, since the beginning of January, I'm sorry, beginning of December, there's been almost 900 players that have entered the transfer portal. Um, and in a NCAA life that we're leading into, which is you were allowed to, that one free transfer year, do you think that sometimes players are being taking a bigger risk with early commitments or, you know, signing someplace that maybe they're not 100 percent sure of because they know they can get out of it sooner? Or, I mean, does that play into things at all for you as you look ahead? You know, uh, I think coaches do a great job of uh, allowing certain players to come into their program from the transfer portal when they know there's many other prospects that we're recruiting at this time. Uh, and that will help them over throughout the years more than the, the person coming through the portal because the portal can, person could have just one year left, but this recruit can have four or five more years left and to have time to work with them and to make them better. So I think each program has their own ways of doing it, but most of those coaches do a great job of just uh, negotiating these players of what they should do and what they shouldn't do. How do you how do you want to commit? You're gonna have a, a a table with a bunch of hats. You're gonna have a puppy dog you pull out of a jacket, right? <laughs> how, or, or are you gonna continue being low key, Jamal Walker, and just post something on Twitter and and please don't bug me anymore, type of thing? Right. No, I think I'm I'm gonna go big for uh, my commitment. You know, I think my commitment is a big thing. You know, just to show whatever program uh, who I am and what is about to happen. You know wherever I commit to or uh, who I commit to, I just want to bring the best me to their program and bring many others with my, uh, with myself, you know, to make a, the best defensive class or join the, one of the best defense classes in the making right now. Well, look, man, I, I don't want to take up too much of your time. I really appreciate you joining us on the show. Um, it's been uh, good to get to talk to you here and I'm sure we'll, we'll catch up again down the road. So thanks for joining. That's Jalen Walker, yes, Salisbury, North Carolina, four-star linebacker number four ranked outside linebacker in the country. I'm Jeremy Birmingham. This has been Bermanology. Thanks for watching, everyone. We'll be back next week with another guest. Have a good one.